our last lesson for this week is going to draw together all of the work we've done so far and um, bringing together our quadratic graphs with our linear graphs with our simultaneous equations so there's a lot of work for your brain to be doing so we're going to start by having a look at solving quadratic equations a quadratic equation is one where i've got an x squared in there like we discussed last lesson what we're going to do is use that same method as last time and deconstruct this equation into two parts. What I'm going to do is say that both of these are equal to y to allow me to draw the graph. So I've got y equals 2x Ooh, and y equals x squared. I've got them the wrong way around. Okay. So I'm going to start by drawing y equals x squared. That should be relatively easy for us now. We should be going at 0, 0, 1, 1, minus 1, 1, 2, 4, because we're squaring, negative 2, 4, and then we haven't quite got enough to get us to 9, so we should be heading somewhere up there. So my graph should look something like this, so we're not quite there for the 9 yet, but lovely and symmetrical. y equals 2x is our next line. This has not got a y-intercept visible, so this is a plus zero line. So our y-intercept is plus zero, and my gradient is two. So I'm going to start by crossing at zero, zero, and I'm going to go across one, up two, across one, up two, across one, up two, and so on. I'm now going to connect those with a straight line. And once again, I'm looking for the places where the line and the curve this time are equal. The place where the line and the curve are equal are their intersection points. There is one of them here and one of them here. I've got this point 2, 4 and this point 0, 0. Because this is a quadratic equation, I actually have two potential solutions. Not always, but in this case, I have got the two. That's x equals 0 and x equals 2. I'm going to change this up a little bit by this time drawing y equals x squared, but also y equals 2x minus 1, because I'm looking for the places where they are the same. So again, I'm going to draw my y equals x squared curve very, very quickly because we should be in a position where that is quite fast. So we're looking at this curve here for y equals x squared. And then I'm going to look at 2x minus 1. So very similar to the last one, but this time I'm going through negative 1 as my y-intercept and I've got a gradient of 2. So I go through negative 1, across 1, up 2, across 1, up 2, across 1, up 2. And I connect those points together. This time I've got one solution only. You can see that this curve and the graph and the straight line graph intersect just one point here. That one point is the point 1, 1. So I've got the value x equals 1 as my only solution. This line, because it only touches at one point, is a tangent to x squared. I'm going to just do one more that's very similar to that. So again, I'm going to split this one up into y equals x squared, and this time y equals 2x plus 3. should be relatively easy for us to sketch this y equals x squared graph once again and we're looking for something like this oh not ideal and then we've got y equals 2x plus 3 so 2x plus 3 goes through this 3 across 1 up 2 across 1 up 2 we've got something like this. We've actually got a little bit of a problem this time in that we can only see one of these intersections with the scale that we've been given. 
So one of these crosses at negative one, one. So I've got one solution, which is x is negative one. If we had this perfectly drawn with our next point, we might be able to see where these cross. But let's just validate that by using a little bit of algebra. So if we rearrange this equation, we can solve it the conventional way. So if I've got y equals 2x plus 3, I can rearrange this by taking the 2x and the 3 from both sides of the equation and then factorise. Factorising this one is going to get me definitely, because of this solution, a plus 1 and then I'm going to have a negative 3. So this negative, th this negative 3 gives me x equals 3 as a root and that bracket there gives me the negative 1. So x is 3 is where we were going next which looks very much like what we were heading to here to get us that 9 and the 3. But to be certain it was nice to make sure we'd done the algebra. This last one is slightly more difficult. Deconstructing is going to get us y equals x squared minus 3. We should be able to see that as usual. You can do this with your um, table if you so wish, but I'm going to just do this very, very quickly, thinking about what happens when I take 3. So if I take 3 off the next one, I would be um, at 4, take 3, which gets me 1. Then 9, take 3, which is going to get me 6. And so on and so on. So I've got a curve that looks like this. So that's this black one. I'm then going to draw y equals 0.5x plus 2. So 0.5x plus 2 means I'm going to go through 2. And this 0.5 means that my gradient is a half. So that means for every 1 across I go half up. Or for 2 across I go 1 up. This is what we've seen earlier on. So 2 across and 1 up. So 2 across and 1 up gets me a line that looks like this. There is one root I can see here very, very clearly. That's the point minus 2, 1. This point is less clear. This is only going to be an estimate of a solution. I'm going to read that one down to find my coordinate. It's about 2.5. And it goes across to about 3.5, roughly. This is not accurate. It is an estimate. So when I give my solution, I should say very clearly that x is either negative 2 or it's approximately equal to 2.5. It is not exactly equal, just approximately. You are given these questions to have a go at. Again, like last time, what I will suggest, oh, that is not how you spell GeoGebra, is to use GeoGebra to help you to look at your solutions. That GeoGebra app is very powerful and can plot anything that you need it to. At this point, you're gonna be looking at your Hegarty maths tasks. Um, and then emailing us if there are any issues. Please stay safe and we'll see you next week.